Hello crafty friends, it's Jess for Mint Owl Studio Stamps and today I'm going to be sharing a card tutorial featuring the new I Moose You set, stamp set. This stamp set was available on January 4th so you can follow the link in the video description to purchase it if you are interested. And I will be sharing videos almost every Monday featuring Mint Owl Studio Stamps here on the Mint Owl Studio channel so be sure to subscribe. To get started, I have a white piece of cardstock cut with a stitched rectangle die, and I am stamping the mousse and the sentiment from the set in My Favorite Things Black Licorice Hybrid ink. It works well for a variety of coloring mediums. One of the fun things about this stamp set are all of the little tiny stamps in it, and they are great for creating backgrounds. And they would also look good as sort of like confetti around him. And that's sort of what I'm going for today. When I attempt to stamp my own background, what I tend to do is go with the largest stamps first. So I can see where I can fill in some space. And then I start stamping with the smaller stamps. It's going to be harder to fit in the large stamps at the end so it's better to do them at the beginning. However, in this instance, all of the stamps are pretty tiny and will fit into small spaces, but the biggest ones are gonna hold the most visual weight. I've also chosen to make the larger stamps in the darker colors. I'm using two sets of Hero Arts Ombre ink, the mint um, series and the purple series. So I will have three different colors of purple ink and three different colors of like tealish mint ink in one stamp pad, but I can put my stamp only on one of the colors at a time. And these will dry more evenly as time goes on, although they look a little bit splotchy at first, which is pretty typical with this ink. When I am placing these small stamps, I am thinking about visual triangles. I don't want all of the large teal hearts to be in a line, for example. I want them to sort of bounce off each other in visual triangles. You also don't want them to be too much in a square shape either. So I am trying to keep this in mind and when you have a placement that you like for the first stamp and the largest stamps, you can kind of use that to help guide you as you fill in with the smaller stamps. So if I've already created a visual triangle with the teal hearts or the mint hearts here, I can use that same visual triangle for the purple stars by stamping a purple star near each one of the hearts. And with the smaller stamps, it's a little bit less important that they create the visual triangle because they're going to be broken up by the larger stamps and also because they're more of a filler. And so you can just kind of put them in where you feel like there's a little bit too much blank space. So this one that I'm stamping right now is a very teeny tiny little heart from the stamp set. And you can tell that these are high quality stamps because even a stamp that small is getting a great impression. And there's no worries about it falling off the block or anything like that. So once I have my background fully in place, I'm ready to do some Copic coloring of the mousse. I want to only show a small bit of the Copic coloring just to give you some tips and I will be using the same tips to color in the complete mousse. I am starting with my lightest color, which in this instance is the E35, and I'm flicking out towards the sides. I personally find that flicking away from me is more effective. Some people prefer to flick towards them. So you kind of have to learn that about yourself as a color, which one works for you, and turn the page in a way that accommodates that. I started, like I said, with the lightest color, and I don't flick all the way towards the center because I want to leave that area the lightest. I want to really create a clear highlight. And the best way to do that is by making sure that you only bring your marker over the highlighted area once or twice. I found that I could use a little bit more range of color, and so I actually did wind up adding an E33. But the other important thing to note is my darkest color is not in the E3 family. It's an E77. It's much, much darker. And I feel like this helps to create a much deeper shadow and provides a lot more contrast to make the coloring more interesting. So that E77, there's just going to be the very lightest touch of it at the edges. 
and I am not I'm going to apply it after I apply all the other colors because I don't want it to have too much trouble blending in and I find that if there's already the darkest color underneath it it blends in a little bit better than if I went straight on the paper with the the darkest color I use the E35 33 and 31 to color in the antlers and the tummy just to keep the colors in a similar family and I applied a lot of the same sort of rules there one thing I do to make sure that all of the features that are in the stamp are more highlighted is after I finish coloring them whether I color it with Copics or colored pencil or any medium I trace over the features in a black ink so in this instance I trace the eyes the nostrils and that little nose crease to help highlight the face and I use the Memento Tuxedo black marker, but pretty much any black marker will do. Finally, I wanted to add in some sequins. I adore the new chocolate truffle mix. It kind of reminds me of chocolate, of course, but also of coffee. And so I could see incorporating it into a themed card like that as well. However, these white sequins that are included are just beautiful. I love how they are matte and shiny at the same time. I've never seen ones quite like this, and I really like them and they fit well with my color scheme. It's just enough to add sparkle without adding another color. And so I'm going to spread them out into the areas that still have a little bit of room. You could kind of keep this in mind when you're doing your original stamping so that you'll know you'll have room for your sequins in the end. In one case, I actually decided to layer the sequin um, over some of the stamping, and I found that that was a little bit rough because you could see through it. So you do want to sort of keep that in mind however if you do need to layer it over it will do a pretty good job of covering it and I adhere everything all these sequins with the multimedia mat from Ranger because that makes them stick very well even through the mail and so that is it for my card today if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're interested in more crafting tutorials please subscribe to the Mint Owl Studio YouTube channel and be sure to follow the link if you're interested in the products. Thanks for watching. Bye.